Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're framing that diamond dots. Well, on Tuesday's episode of the show, I brought you guys uh, diamond dots, diamond painting. And I showed you how, uh, how it works and how you do it. And it was just one of those things that I really enjoyed doing and I thought I would bring it to your attention. And I know I said during that show I wasn't going to do the framing of it as a show episode, but this just goes to show that I can't be trusted. <laughs> I searched the internet, guys, and I looked around because I was curious as to how other people were doing this, and I found very few results as far as how to frame up one of these things. The fact that it's on canvas can cause a few issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into the framing right away by attaching our Diamond Dots painting to a backer board. I've seen several videos where they place double-sided tape and they go all the way around the perimeter of their diamond painting. Some people put stripes this way, some people put stripes this way. I saw one where they put a diagonal stripe with double-sided tape and then they stuck it to a backer board of a store-bought frame. I can say for fact that I have seen these things framed in person with that method of double-sided tape and over time, I guess the canvas stretches a little and what happens is you get this effect all the way through your diamond painting. That ripple effect that really takes away from the end product. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to cut off all of these borders and get rid of them completely so that we just have our cat painting left. Well, we now need some hardboard out of the rack. This is 11 by 14 inches. So we're going to cut a piece of hardboard. You guessed it, 11 by 14. So all I'm going to use is this Elmer's spray adhesive. Now, if you don't have Elmer's in your area, that's fine. You could use whatever spray adhesive is available to you. Now, applying it to our project. We are not going to spray the canvas. You want to spray the backer board. And normally when I'm doing this, I apply the spray adhesive. I let it set up for three minutes and then apply the pattern to the wood. However, the reason you let it dry like that is to get a temporary adhesion. You want it so that you can remove that pattern. Well, we don't want a temporary here. So I'm just gonna let this dry up for about a minute. I don't wanna give it much more than that, um, but I don't wanna give it less than that because I don't want the glue seeping through the canvas either. Let's spray the board, give it one minute, and then we're going to apply our canvas onto the board. Now that may have looked like I was spraying an awful lot of adhesive on there, but you want to remember that's a board. It's going to soak some of it up. So now very carefully align your edge. Make sure it's lined up and we're going to lay it down. Now, I would leave this alone now and give this some time to set up. It may not even hurt to put it under some pressure, but make sure that that board or that that canvas is completely adhered down to your backer board. Well, with the whole diamond dots canvas and the black cat and that sort of thing, I didn't want to do a darker color of frame. So I'm going with cherry. So what I have is these are three quarters of an inch thick. Um, and they're two inches wide. What I need to do right off the bat is I need to mill the rabbit in each piece that will accept the glass and as well it will accept our backer board with our diamond dots um, attached to it. I can't tell you how deep to put the rabbit. Only you can check that out. 
according to the thickness of your backer board and the thickness of the glass that you're going to be using. But then you have to allow for your diamond dots as well, which is another thickness. So do all those calculations, figuring out how deep your dado has to be. These diamonds here are quite close to the edge of the canvas. So I don't want to have it overlapping too far and have it so that it blocks out part of my design. So you want to be careful with that. Either way, figure out what uh, size rabbit you want to cut in your frames and uh, get that cut in all of your pieces. And then from there we can cut our miters. So I'm going to go through all of these pieces, pick which ones I want for the length and the width, and I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle on one side of each board, making sure that the rabbit is on the inside of the 45. Now some people when making their frames like to measure. and. I'm not really a measuring kind of a guy, not for this sort of a thing. I like to hold up a piece and mark it. That's what I like to do. And let me just show you how I do that. I've shown this on my other frame tutorials, but if you're fairly new to viewing the channel, you may not have had the opportunity to see that. So what I do is I place the corner of my board right down against this corner right here, this point. And once you get that lined up, all you need to do is mark with a pencil where this edge intersects this top corner. You see that there? So now I've marked that and it's as simple as taking a combination square, placing it on your board, lining it up with that pencil mark and drawing it through just like that. There now is your 45. If you want to know how to line it up with the blade, I just place the combination square back on the edge, just like that, line it up with our line and draw the line here. Now I know that my blade has to strike on that line and it will cut the 45 perfectly all the way through and give us a perfect end piece. And then from there, by setting a depth stop, once I confirm that that's the size or the length that I want, I can duplicate it perfectly. So now with that marked out, I'm going to cut these two short sides and then use the exact same method to cut the long sides of the frame. All right, so we'll just throw this quickly into a frame clamp here and let's see what we ended up with. Um, so we'll take our little kitty cat here and drop it in the frame and hope that it fits. And it does just like that. So flip it over and there we go. So the only thing that's left to do at this point to the frame is I want to do a small round over on the inside edges of the frame and then once it's put together later on I may do a secondary round over on the outside edges but for now let's do the inside one and uh, I guess we'll just glue it together. Well just like any other glue up you want to be prepared here. So I have some freezer paper down on my bench to keep the glue from, you know, getting on my precious bench. And then on top of that, I have some clean water and some Q-tips here or cotton swabs to, uh, to clean up any of the squeeze out. It's very important with a frame to get the squeeze out off of the pieces as soon as possible, especially on the inside corners. So we're just going to apply a little bit of adhesive here. Spread it out in a nice even coating. And then we'll do the other side. It's 
slide this into place. Now one thing that I like to do when I am gluing a frame together is I like to have the side that is going to face your audience, so to speak, or face the people that are going to be looking at this frame. Um, I like to have that side facing out. Now it is possible in glue ups that sometimes things will shift. And if that happens, you would rather have the side that you're going to see that's facing you when it's on the wall. You would rather have that side being perfect, but those uh, shifting on the back end of it or the back side, you won't necessarily see that while it's in the clamp right away. And that could spell disaster um, when it comes to taking the frame out of the clamp. So at least this way, if something should go all funky on you, at least you've got it looking good on the front face. Well, it's been overnight, and before we can carry on any further with this project, we need to unclamp it, and I'm going to give the entire frame a good sanding all the way around. As well, I want to do a 1 8 inch round over on all the perimeter edges of our frame. <laughs> Well, at this point in time, you have a pretty darn acceptable frame. That cherry is really nice, and I'm sure that the lighter reddish color is going to really look great with that black center here. But I want to add something a little different, and this is where the frame takes a bit of a twist. And what I've done is I've drawn out a couple of cat paw prints. and. I cut them on the scroll saw for the purpose of making a stencil. And any of you who have ever had a cat or know somebody who has a cat knows that cats give a darn about no one but themselves. So if you just poured this cat, or this frame rather, out of concrete, I am picturing that your uh, such and such cat just came along and said, oh, fresh concrete, and walked along the frame. So I'm thinking something along the lines of basically carving cat feet into this frame as if the cat had no regard for your project whatsoever. And I think it'll add just a little bit of character to this frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw these little paw prints out here. And once I get them drawn out in such a way that I'm happy with them, I am going to carve these. So I'm going to get those drawn on and then when uh, I get that finished I'll come back and I'll see you. And there we have my uh, jerk cat walking all over my frame and now it's just a matter of carving these out. And for that I'm going to be using a power carver. Um, I have a fine Typhoon Burr. Now this is a, a very aggressive burr, even though it's considered as a fine tip. But if you don't have a power carver like, um, such as this one that I use, no worries. Dremel tools work just as well. Anyway, I'm going to go through and I'm going to carve out all of these feet. Now you don't need a video on me carving every one. So I think what I'll do is I'll carve this one right here. I'll show you the technique and then off camera, I'll finish off the rest. Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to do the rough out of these feet. And I'm using a Typhoon Ball Burr. Remember to use your pinky for uh, giving yourself some stability on your work. And we're just going to very carefully work inside of the main pad here to get the shape that we want. You also want to remember that there's really no hurry here. So just work your way up to the line and clear your dust as frequently as you can. 
Also, don't be afraid to turn your frame if you have to in order to get better access to see your lines. So something I want to point out is you don't have to worry too much about these being perfect. If this was a cat that's tracking across your project, they're not cookie cutters. They're not stomping down, making perfect impressions of every foot. So they don't have to be identical. So once you get the pad here the way that you want it, you can move on to the toes. Now for the toes, I'm using another fine Typhoon burr, but this one is a straight burr. And the only reason for that is because these are much smaller sections and this will make it easier to get in there and work with it. So the same technique, just work slowly and work up to the line until you're happy with the results. Clearing away your dust quite often to get the visual so that you can see where those lines are. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to take a little piece of sandpaper and we're going to just run over the top of this just to take away some of those burrs to get us a better image of our paw print so that we can see what we're looking at. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with the depth of the print. I'm happy with the way it looks, except it looks like it's carved because of all the scratches of the aggressive Typhoon Burr. So now it's time to sand inside of here. And we can do that with the Power Carver as well. Well, our next step is to get in here with one of these Ruby Carvers and we're just going to clean up our carving lines. You don't want to gouge it any deeper than you already have. You're just trying to smooth out the carving lines that you've made with the aggressive birds. So go around through each of the pads and each of the toes and just give it a little sanding. Like you don't have to go crazy on this, guys. And once you're happy with the results that you've got a nice cat print stuck on your frame, then you can move on to the next one. Uh, I'm gonna finish off this one here with some more of the Ruby Carvers and possibly a finer stone, but when I come back to see you now, we'll have all of these uh, cat prints done and it'll be ready to move on to the next step. And there you have it. Framing the diamond dots. Guys, this project is a complete blast and it really opens up the avenue to your creativity. You have to remember that a custom frame that is just an ordinary frame that is made to uh, the size of this, which is 11 by 14, is not a custom frame. It's a frame. It's an 11 by 14 frame. If you want that, go to Walmart. Simple. If you want something special, make it special. You don't have to do the carving of these cat footprints. But that is what makes this customized. It is something out of the ordinary that not everyone has access to just reach on a shelf and purchase. These cat footprints, they could be anything. They don't have to be carved. You could paint them. You could scroll them out of the frame. You could 
Draw them with magic marker. You could make that little template, lay it on, and just give it a little blast of spray paint to give it that kind of ink pad look like it was stamped on there. There's a million different things. You could leave it alone if you don't want to do the footprints. Use your imagination. Guys, I wasn't going to do this project. I honestly wasn't going to bore the audience with yet another frame tutorial, but yet it's such a great idea to carve these footprints. Why would I not bring it to your attention? What's wrong with carving it and then painting it on the inside of your carving to really make it stand out? I considered that, but I didn't want the footprints to be the focal point. I want the Diamond Dots cat to be the focal point and these cute little carved footprints just to kind of be a little bit of an accent to make that frame custom. It's a great project, guys, and a heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm not a cat person anyway. <laughs> guys, this has been a really great project. I've had a lot of fun doing it. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you don't miss new notifications of future episodes of the show. If you like the content, feel free to share it around. Like, why not? Why not spread the wealth on this and have other people join in and make their own frames as well? Guys, I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And I honestly hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.